What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American Politics, back in with a new video. Today, it is time that we discuss the Senate and governorship races that are happening in Wisconsin on November 8th. Now, obviously the Senate race, I think at this point, we really don't have to discuss that much of it. So, today's video will be mostly focused on the governor's race, but for the first part, we'll discuss the Senate race for a little bit. And all that good stuff. Now, the reason I want to make one more video on Wisconsin is, at this point, this is probably the last time we're going to really be able to discuss Wisconsin as this toss, somewhat of a toss-up seat for the governorship. At this point, I think Michaels is starting to pick up enough steam where, after this video, it's more than likely going to be a Michaels victory. But... In any case, we should still discuss the polling and what are the key parts of Wisconsin to watch out for on election night. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow that Twitter account in the description down below, and join the channel today. That is right, folks, for just 10 cents a day, you can join Real American Politics, only 10 cents a day. That's a phenomenal deal as you help support the daily content. That's right, folks. The daily content that I've been bringing to you for basically a year now is supported by you. So I hope you join today. All right, folks. So like I said in the intro, we'll discuss the Senate race for a couple minutes, then get to the real meat and potatoes of this video, the governorship. So the Senate race. This is one of those races where I always had a feeling that Ron Johnson was going to blow out Barnes. I always had this feeling. And the second that Johnson started the surge, right here on September 13th to 14th, that's when I immediately knew, oh yeah, Ron Johnson is going to win this race easily. He started to hit Barnes over the crime stuff, over the defund the police stuff. And Barnes' campaign fell apart. A lot of old tweets got pulled up. And not just, you know, some meme tweets like Trump posted 15 years ago. Like, no, like, white people bad. 2016 was F-word. I still can't say the word on YouTube. Twitter, I maybe could, but you know what the word is. The fun word. But in, a, in any other case, this clown Barnes got exposed hard for being a radical. He's running as a pro-working-class Democrat even though I hate white people that in a 90% white state. But you get the point. Barnes' campaign fell apart after early September, and Johnson began the surge. And this is the thing about Johnson most of you understand, but I don't think some of you truly get. Johnson is a huge overperformer of polls, not just by a point. We're talking three, four, five points. He always overperforms the polling expectations. And look how much he's up by right now. 3.3. So even if it's only a three-point underperformance of Johnson, which is less than it was in 2016, 2010, I got a check, but I'm pretty sure it's a little bit less than that. In any other case, Johnson will win this race by around 6.3% according to past trends. Yeah, Ron Johnson is not going to lose this race. The RCP adjusted average is Johnson plus 7 and you look at some of these polls, CNN has him up, YouGov has him up, Marquette has him up by six, and these clowns, they're one of the worst pollsters in Wisconsin. Yes, they're one of the only ones that poll Wisconsin regularly, but of anybody that polls Wisconsin outside of New York Times, these guys suck. Sure, 2018, they had them, they were right technically, but look at their prior polls. Tony Evers is going to win Wisconsin by six points and all this other crap. So at this point, it's quite clear that Ron Johnson's going to win this race when even the shit polling is starting to admit he's got this in the bag. And of course, like most other races this fall, the undecided voters, when you look at the data, are white working class voters. Geez, I wonder how they're going to vote with a guy that hates that said he hates white people and all that other stuff. But I think you're going to understand that Ron Johnson's winning this race. No more BS. That's the case. End of story. Now let's get to the race that I'm actually wanting to discuss. The Senate race I kind of wanted to for reasons of convenience because it's kind of the last time we're really going to discuss Wisconsin in a full video. But in other case, let's go to the governorship. 
Look, at this point, I'm starting to get to the same area as I was with Johnson a month ago. He's going to beat, you know, Mandela Barnes easily. As for Tim Michaels, like I said just two seconds ago, I'm starting to get to that point. I think Michaels is going to beat the crap out of Evers, Evers, whatever. I call him Evers, people call him Evers, whatever. Either way, Evers, in my opinion, is going to lose. He's going to lose this race, but it will be a bit closer. The reason being is Evers is technically a stronger candidate. That's not saying much, though, but he is a stronger can candidate than Barnes, who's ironically the lieutenant governor of Wisconsin. Figure that one out. But in any other case, Michaels is picking up steam kind of similar to Johnson. And you look here, back down to the adjusted average. Again, I think this is the best metric to show you where this race really is. Michaels is up by 4.3 when you account for past, you know, polling errors for one side. That's a pretty significant amount for Wisconsin. Not even Scott Walker. Well, I think Scott Walker actually won by almost six. But when you're starting to get to a four to five point margin against Evers, who is a stronger candidate than Democrats that ran in the past like 10 years... That's pretty substantial. And if Michaels was running against like somebody that Scott Walker ran against outside of Evers, Michaels would have won easily. This race would have been no brainer. But Evers is one of those candidates that once again, you look at the map of Wisconsin, you could probably guess where he does best in up north in the area of Douglas, Bayfield, Ashland, you know, these were all those Democrats, or I should say older Democrats that were from Madison, place like Milwaukee. They've been moving up there, even some of them from Chicago. But either way, a lot of these voters that, you know, they barely voted for Biden. I should say they voted for Biden by like 9, 10 points. They voted for Evers by like 15 to 16. Those are the type of voters Evers does best with. You know, those longtime Democrats in a place like Lafayette, Wisconsin, Richland, Crawford, a place like Juneau to an extent. You know, this place Trump won by 30? This is a place I think, I'm pretty sure this is a Kerry in Gore County, Obama for sure. But <clears throat> either way, these are the type of voters Evers do traditionally has done better with in his past elections. He's ran for the state for the governorship, the superintendent stuff. But you get the point. He does better with those type of voters. But Michaels has a unique base. Look at where he did best in the primary. Of course, in the more Trumpy part of the state of Wisconsin. What do I mean? Northwest, Southwest. So essentially West. Everything West of Dane and Portage. This is the part of the state that Michaels is going to have, in my opinion, a bigger overperformance than Johnson with. These are voters that I think he will get similar Trump margins in a place like Grant, a place like Richland. I think Johnson still wins these counties, but you look at his Senate performance of 2016, he still underperformed Trump by a couple points. I think Michaels will do better in this part of the state than Johnson, but he's not going to do as good as he will as Johnson does in a place like Waukesha. No crap. But one county that he could do better is Fond du Lac. Look at his primary performance. At the one place in southeastern Wisconsin, M Michaels could do better than Johnson is. Fond du Lac. Go look at that stuff. I mean, he got, I think, was 60, 70 percent the vote of Fond du Lac. It was ridiculous. But the one part of the state that's critical to the statewide races in Wisconsin, Kenosha, Kenosha, Kenosha. Whoever wins Kenosha tends to win the statewide race, especially for the governorship. This is the bellwether for Wisconsin governor's races. Walker won it tw three times. Evers won it. That's a trend. Now, for the presidential level, it's basically always been a bellwether except 2020. Huh. Neat. But any other case... This is the most important county in the state of Wisconsin, especially for a governor's race. It indicates how these independent voters who used to be Democrat, they used to be more of a Democrat voting block of Wisconsin, how they're voting. If, they're, if this is voting red, Republicans are going to win the statewide race by a couple points easily. If they're winning it by three to four, like a Trump margin, they're going to win by six, seven points. It just Kenosha's that kind of a bellwether 
for statewide races in Wisconsin, except for 2020 at the presidential level. Again, very neat, very um, coincidental. <clears throat> but anyways, folks, I think you understand the point. Kenosha is the most critical part of the election. Yes, there's a couple places like Fond du Lac I would look at. A place like Marathon, a place like Chippewa, there are some decent, like, some fascinating precincts to look at in these counties. But outside of that, countywide, I would just look at Kenosha, Fond du Lac, and a place like Grant. If he's doing Trump margin to Grant and doing decent in a place like Waukesha, he's going to win the election easily. But anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button down below, subscribe, <clears throat> share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow that Twitter account in the description down below, and join the channel today. Anyways, folks, we'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed to all of you.